first, the first dust we're gonna get off is to get off the body. We're gonna get in the word. We're gonna study the word more oh, this week. Oh God! Get in that word, because your gift means nothing if you don't have a foundation of the word. All you become really is a is a sorcerer. Or one day, uh, or uh, as we talked last week, I don't want to say the word because I get excited about it. A donkey. I don't want to say. I just start calling y'all that. I don't want to use that word. Yeah. But um. That's all we become because our service becomes empty. So get in the word, y'all. So what was number one? Break the cycle. I can't hear you. Destroy the cycle. Number one was what? Destroy the cycle. Destroy the cycle. And we all have cycles in our lives. Learn your cycle and destroy that cycle. What's number two? Do not neglect the gift. Then number three, 2 Timothy 1 and 6. I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's almost time. Somebody read it for me. 2 Timothy 1 and 6. Find it and read it. This is the last principle that we need to do concerning our spiritual gifts. This is the New Living Translation. This is why I remind you to fan into flame the spiritual gift God gave you mm -hmm. when I laid my hands on you. Okay, now I got a question for you. Does that scripture say that your pastor or your apostle fans the flame? Or in, in the, in the um, King James Version it says, stir up the gift of God that was given to you by the laying on the hands. Does it say it's the responsibility of your leader? To steer the gift up, or does it say that you're supposed to steer the gift up? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So now I'm going to ask another question. Don't raise your hand. How many of y'all throughout the week steer the gift up in your life? Uh, now, in case somebody says, "Well, I don't know what you mean by steer it up," other translation says, "Fan into a flame. Fan that thing into a flame. Kindle it anew. Kindle afresh. Kindle a blaze." rekindle the gift. Some of us, we used to operate in certain gifts, and now we've taken breaks, and because we've taken breaks, that thing needs to be rekindled. There's a word I want to I wanted to talk to us about because it also uses the analogy of embers. Does anybody know what embers are? Anybody know what embers are? Anybody know what charcoal is? Yeah. Charcoal is a form of embers. <clears throat> Overseers. Uh, charcoal is a form of embers. And the point of embers is that embers stay hot and can still burn even if the fire goes out. And actually, you can use some forms of the embers, and they can restart a fire. So if you're steering the gift up inside of you, then you shouldn't need somebody else to come start your fire. The gift that's inside of you ought to spark its own fire even after. Because I know some of us, we go through situations and the fire goes out. We go through situations in the week. We go through situations throughout the month. But my question is, what type of, of system do we have? Have we set up a system where we're so codependent or so dependent on somebody else to stir up our fire? Yes. Or can we stir up our own fire? Because I'm telling you, if you can stir up your own fire... Oh, I can stir it up. <laughs> if you can stir up your own fire, mm -hmm. we will be in a better state than we're in. So what we need to do is to begin to ask God to give us the wisdom to stir up our own stuff. So what's the first principle? Break the cycle. Destroy those cycles of oppression, depression, suppression... Any other kind of oppression, <laughs> those cycles of backsliding, those cycles that, that deal and torture you in your mind, the cycles that make you feel that you're nothing, that there's no way, no hope, no how, those cycles that attack your identity, begin to destroy those very cycles in your life. Now, I want to ask, how are we going to destroy those cycles? What's the first thing I said we need to do to destroy the cycles? Oh, like know your cycle. You have to learn your cycle first and be honest about your cycle. Like I said, everything in life operates off of a cycle. So some of us, as I said, our cycle may be we do good for five days. And then on that sixth day, we find ourselves in a rut. 
So what you need to do from learning your cycle, develop a plan of action so that when you, before you get to that sixth day, because we got to start to be proactive. Most of yeah. us are reactive concerning everything. We don't tell people we're going through until we're going through. We don't tell people we need prayer until it's got to an emergency state. We don't do anything until now it's almost at a, at a level where we need a miracle to take place, when we need to learn to be mature enough to be strong enough to admit, I need help. That's not a sign of weakness. That's a sign of strength. A sign of weakness is when we say, nah, I'm cool, I got it, I got it, I got it. And on the inside, you already know that you about to explode. And you know that when you hit that point, you're going to go back to something that you used to do that only gratifies your flesh. And I'm not just talking from a sexual standpoint, but whatever we have that we run back to, that only gratifies and appeases our flesh for the moment. Those are the things that kill our character and smother the gifts that's inside of us. And no matter how many times your leader attempts to redig the wells that's inside of you, if you keep smothering it with the things that you won't deal with in, the, in a mature manner, then those wells will continue to be smothered. And eventually God's going to say, you know what? Not right now. They're not ready for it. And we don't want to see that, okay? So number one was, again, destroy that cycle. You have the power and the authority inside of you to destroy it. But if you feel like you don't have it, it's because you don't have enough word game in your life. Because that's where the power is going to come from. It's going to come from the word. If you're not using the word, no wonder we're defeated. We need the word of God in our lives. I can't emphasize it more. I could care less about your spiritual gifts. I could care less about your ability to prophesy. I could care less about your ability 